Welcome to Salisbury University on the Air, a program highlighting the activities and the people of the campus. My name is Susan Purnell. It's been said that music is a universal language. As many people begin making plans for special trips and reunions this season, SU hopes to transport them to happy, relaxing, and excited places in this year's annual Winter Music Festival, Holiday Travels. In fact, one member of SU's music theater and dance department is doing some traveling of his own in December to New York's Lincoln Center, where he will solo with the National Chorale. Joining me to discuss these travels are Drs. William Folger, co-chair of SU's music theater and dance department, and professor of music, and John Wesley Wright, associate professor of music. First is Bill. So welcome, Bill. Hi, well, thanks for I having should me. say welcome back. <laughs> yes, thank you. We see each other this time every year. Yeah. And I always look forward to the music festival at Christmas time. And um, this year, I think the topic or theme is travels. Is that right? It's correct. So yeah. how does that transfer into the music selections that you're going to have? Well, as you uh, just said, many people go away for the holidays, some as extravagant as to Europe or Asia. And, and a lot of our pieces of uh, this winter festival are from uh, music from Spain, Mexico, um, from France, or related areas. And, and so we just thought it was a nice way to sort of uh, put everything together. That, that's great. So what ensembles exactly are involved in the festival? We have the Salisbury and University Chorale starting mm -hmm. the festival, mm -hmm. and then the Salisbury Pops on the Tuesday following, and then the Jazz Ensemble on that Thursday, and then uh, finishing up with the Salisbury Symphony Orchestra. Oh my gosh. Now, <laughs> Where and when do these concerts take place? All of these concerts take place in Holloway Hall Auditorium. Okay, everyone's in Holloway Hall. That's correct. Mm -hmm. 7.30 p.m. At 7.30. So that should be easy for yes. the folks out there to remember. That's great. I'm That's glad right. you coordinated it that way. Now, you direct the Salisbury and University Chorales, right? I do. Um, which is, what, what is the title that you're going to use this year for your concert? Christmas in the Southwest, and I chose that title because two of the selections are by Conrad Sousa, who lives out in Arizona, and he, he wrote these beautiful pieces. Um, one is Carols and Lullabies, and has to do with um, Spanish, from, from French and fluent Spanish to Mexican Spanish, um, ten carols, traditional carols, and then a Christmas garland, which he took traditional Christmas carols and changed the rhythms and harmonies. And, and made them more Southwest, or I mean, how do you little, do that? Yes, it has a Southwest twist, some huh. of the mixed meter uh, effect, and also the instrumentation. The carols and lullabies is for guitar, harp, and marimba. Oh. Very beautiful piece. Right, yeah. so a Hispanic sort of flavor, too. That's great. Um, now, it includes student and faculty soloists. Am I right on that? That's correct. Okay. How, where do you get your, uh, so which faculty members are involved? We have um, actually a physics professor, uh, Nick really? Troop, yeah, new to the campus, who is singing with our wonderful Jeffrey Todd and a baritone duet in one of the carols and lullabies. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, some of our other community members. Alice Redfield is singing in the uh, trio in the John Rutter Gloria. So it's, it's quite a nice mix of both students, faculty, and community. I think that's so great that they, they all come together. I, I actually did not realize you had community people as well. Yeah, the community chorus, the Salisbury Chorale mm -hmm. uh, joins in with about a, almost 100 singers. Oh, gosh. And I, I understand you're going to have the audience sing along, which I have to just say, I don't know if you remember this, but my mom, just before she died, we went to hear your concert, and I think she thought the whole thing was an audience sing-along. <laughs> <laughs> so she sang along almost everything that, you, okay. that you did, <laughs> and I was having to apologize to the people left and right of me and in front of me and back of me, and they were like, no, she sings well, it's fine. <laughs> but she, we all really enjoy that audience sing-along, that's great. Okay. So how much are the tickets for your concert? It's $12 for adults, mm -hmm. and 9 for seniors, SU faculty, staff, and then students are three dollars, oh, and, and non-SU nice. students are five dollars. So okay, great. A good deal. Now, are there any other musical performances that you personally are involved with? Yeah, the uh, musical theater workshop is presenting a cabaret-style performance uh, called "It's a Musical," and we took a piece out of the musical "Something Rotten," which cites about thirty different show tunes from across all periods, anything from Oklahoma to two selections from the Miserable. Uh, so oh, it's, it's something for everybody. I would love that. Now, when is that? That's Thursday through Sunday, December 7th through 10th. Okay. And that's at 8 o'clock, a, a Sunday matinee at 2 p.m., and that's in the Black Box Theater. Okay, so that's a smaller venue. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are they acting as well, or is it just a series of songs? Oh, no, there's a acting, choreography, yes, oh, blocking. that yeah. sounds very interesting. I like that mix of the different Broadway It's a lot shows. of fun. Yeah, yeah that's great. 
So then up next after your, uh, let's go back to the Salisbury um, and University Corral, is the Salisbury Pops, directed by Lee Nyer. What do they That's have right. in store for us this year? It's a wonderful program and a very special guest, uh, Dr. John Wesley Wright. Tenor will be leading uh -huh. a sing-along and singing his solo work. He'll talk later about that. Uh, he will. And uh, we also have a, a new, something new, uh, a flute quartet, and they'll be playing some traditional festive holiday music um, before the concert. And then um, also featuring a um, beautiful arrangement by the Philadelphia Orchestra of the Czech carol, uh, Good King Wenceslas. And uh, some, so it'll be recognizable holiday favorites um, for the uh, Salisbury Pops. And Santa Claus going to come? Santa's expected to be there, yeah. Uh -huh. So bring the family and the children. Very good. And that is actually a very good concert for all ages, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Something for everyone. Um, what other Pops traditions might we expect? The Salisbury Pops will continue the uh, Kettle Campaign, the Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been very successful. Our community has been very generous in that regard. So you can bring uh, non-perishable canned goods and, or make them. Um, monetary donations. Oh, you can bring goods as well. Okay. I believe they've done that in the okay, past. Okay, good. Um, now, you talked about that flute ensemble. That's, uh, tell us a little bit more about that. The flute ensemble actually has some very fine uh, flute players, and to feature them, because you, usually in a concert band situation, you have lots of woodwinds, and this features them specifically. They've just been, the flutes? Just the flutes we're playing. Yeah, there's a quartet of them. Yeah. Wow. I heard them rehearsing found the other four night. great is it flautists or flutists here in Salisbury? Either way, I guess. I depends on who, who either you speak. Either either. <laughs> yes, okay, either right, either. right. Um, now, the SU Jazz Ensemble is next, and that's directed by Jerry Tabor. Um, tell us what kinds of music that concert will bring. Yeah, he's um, performing music by composer performers, um, Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers, and then One for All. Um, it's a mixture of jazz and funk music. Oh, yeah. That's fantastic. Nice variety. Yeah. Great. Um, and again, now let's go back. The Salisbury Pops and the Jazz Ensemble, they're free concerts, That's right? That's correct. Yep. 7.30 Holloway Hall. 7.30. Okay. Just want to make sure we're, we're good on that. And then the festival itself culminates with the Salisbury Symphony Orchestra, who I think has a theme, I'll pronounce it incorrectly probably, but um, Joyeux Noel? Something like that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that and who their guest uh, performer is this year. All right. In addition to some holiday favorites, um, they're featuring harpist um, Jacqueline Polauf, and um, she is a, uh, going to perform the harp concerto Bois de Leu, um, and it's um, uh, And then she is well known because she uh, featured recently a brand new harp uh, uh, for selection for voice and harp. And that you, was premiered at Carnegie Hall. So. What do you know about her her past performances? She's performed at the Library of Congress before, uh -huh. and also um, at a um, major harp uh, conference. So she's national. That was in Vancouver, right? Vancouver. Um, so she's international. International harpist. harpist, yes. Any other pieces that the orchestra is going to perform that you know of? Sure. In addition to the holiday favorites, I'm going to let some be a surprise. It's okay. Fair enough. But um, the uh, La Sienne Suite Number no. One by Bizet. Uh, it's a very. Uh, I think people will recognize it. A very famous piece, especially around this period. It focuses uh, on French-centered music. So again, it goes to the whole holiday travels mm -hmm. idea. So. I, I like that. I wish that you're making me very jealous because I've never <laughs> been able to leave the store at okay. Christmas time. So there's no holiday travels for me. But uh, that would. I think that would be wonderful to go to Europe or something for. Um, for Christmas. Where and when will that SSO Orchestra concert take place? That'll be also at Holloway Hall Auditorium at 7.30 p.m. So it's all the same, okay, except That's for the Black Box Theater. That's correct. Great. And how much are tickets for the SSO Orchestra? Tickets, place? 25 for adults, 20 for seniors, and there's $10 for these faculty, staff, students, and, okay. and then $5 special student price. Great. Well, I tell you, I don't know how you do it all. Uh, there's there's so much going on this time of year, and I think our community is so fortunate to have this variety of musical performances that are, are right here, many of them free, some of them for a nominal amount of money, and with an awful lot of talent. So thank you, Bill, for bringing all that together and um, making our Christmases a little more joyous or Joyeux, right. as they Joyeux. say in France. Right. Right. Well, thanks for this opportunity. And this is one way, as you said, if you can't get to Europe, you can go That's by sitting right. at Holloway Hall Auditorium. Yes, have a vicarious experience. Exactly. Thank you again thanks. for being here. And now, here's a look at events happening on the campus in January.
Holloway Hall is not the only place to see SU's musical talent showcased. My next guest is Dr. John Wesley Wright, Associate Professor of Music, to tell us about a very special performance in New York this December. So welcome, John. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Always good to talk to you and to see you. And before we get into the main event that we're going to talk about today, okay. tell us a little bit about your background, your musical background. All right. Um, I started singing a little bit in church. I'm from Rome, Georgia, and uh, was inspired by a, a, a gal that I went to high school with who played classical piano and and uh, and went to Maryville College in Tennessee. Uh, went to another recital of a, a senior singing in all different languages, and I said, I want to change my major to that. So, it, it was really not a very well planned out uh, thing. But uh, I, I literally heard a friend's recital and heard her singing in various languages and changed my major. And how long have you been here at SU? This is my 12th year, believe mm. it or not. Time, no. time is flying when you're having fun. Because I can remember when you came and we were doing the tennis tournaments and you would sing the Star Spangled Banner. Which I miss doing. I know. Me too. Me too. Yes. Those were some good years. They were. Now, you teach in the music theater and dance department. Yes. So are the kids that we see at the SU Opera Workshop and the, is it the Singer Showcase, those are the children that you're teaching? I should Absol say young adults. Yes, absolutely. I, I have this fantastic job um, of 90% of what I do is I get to take a one-on-one -on -one journey mm -hmm. with, uh, with folks for four years. Uh, you know, everyone, in, if you're majoring in music, or, you concentrate on a specific instrument. Mm -hmm. so, so you're we have, the voice I am the, the, voice, the voice person. Right. Mm -hmm. I believe I'm the the university's first full-time voice teacher. So it's uh, it was a really special uh, thing to transition coming here and developing mm -hmm. our vocal program. And I hear some of your students have really done well nationally even. Absolutely. We have students who have uh, uh, fared well. Uh, we have a young man right now his, who's uh, now a junior. but. He, his name is Jeffrey Todd. He's a baritone. He's a local kid. Remember that name. I remember that name, Jeffrey Todd. And mm -hmm. he, he, is, uh, he won third place uh, in the Nationals uh, as a freshman Gosh. and second place in the Nationals as a, as a sophomore. So we keep going. Uh, he's going to have to do gonna, the international. He's going to have to do the senior. international, <laughs> right. And Absolutely. many others and, uh, that we're proud, so proud of. Uh, John Wickstead, Leah Wilson, and they're now local, local teachers. So it's really cool to see, see, that, uh, see them grow up and, and stay in the area. Mm -hmm. Well, we're so lucky to have you. Well, thank you. And you've got a very exciting performance coming up, coming up on December 15th. I think you're singing at the Lincoln Center, right? I am. With the am. National Chorale. Yes. Have you done that yes. before? I have, no, I have not sung uh, with the National Chorale. I have not sung Handel's Messiah at Lincoln Center. Uh, in, in many ways, it's, it's not the first time I've sung at Lincoln Center. I've sung at Lincoln Center with the American Spiritual Ensemble, mm -hmm. which is a group that I tour with professionally. Mm -hmm. But uh, this will be my first solo debut at Lincoln Center. So this is a tradition that's been going on for decades, am I right? Yes, this is the organization's 50th uh, anniversary sing-in, and it's quite an extraordinary event. The, the audience will be singing along with the choir, uh, and also uh, there'll, be, uh, every, there'll be young conductors who will get their debut. There will be a conductor who will conduct um, each movement, a different conductor for oh, each really? movement. So it's a really neat, neat experience. For, so how for, many soloists like you are there? Well, uh, it, that, in that regard, it's not, uh, it's, it is traditional. Usually a big work like that has four soloists, mm -hmm. a soprano, alto, tenor, bass, uh -huh. or a counter tenor if you're not using an alto. And so it's, we have four soloists, so that uh, I'm, so I'm the you're, tenor you're soloist. You're the tenor. Right. Okay, and then the audience sings this, just the Hallelujah Chorus or other songs no, as No, well? every single choral number uh, there will be groups that will come and they will be sectioned off and the, these different conductors will be leading the different sections. So there will be about 3,000 people filling 
uh, the Lincoln Center, the Lincoln Center Hall, the David Geffen Hall, and it will this reverberate. Can you imagine the, this no. reverberation around you, surround sound? Because surround everybody sound. there pretty much can sing, I would assume. I, I think so. And if they not, think they can. if not, there's safety in numbers, right? right? I mean, there's like a, <laughs> so a few few that are off are going to mess it up. <laughs> exactly. That, that's exactly. So funny. Um, now, if I wanted to go, how yes. would I get tickets? Very easy, nationalcorral.believeorg. Uh, uh, if it's not org, it's com. Oh, so right. National okay. Corral, all, all one word. And go to the ticket section, and the, they range from 30 to to $100. That's not so bad. It's not bad at all. And uh, you can choose to sing or not to sing. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's an experience, But is, sure. It is definitely. And what an honor for you to be Absolutely. chosen. That's, that's outstanding. I know a lot of people are familiar with your work with the American Spiritual Ensemble. Yes. I am. And uh, I know you've brought it to Salisbury, I think, several times, Sem haven't yes. you? Yes. Yeah. We've been lucky enough to have uh, the university and the town has supported uh, the American Spiritual Ensemble as artists and residents. And so it's been mm -hmm. a wonderful way to weave my professional life into my, my teaching life. Mm -hmm. so. Is there any relationship between the American Spiritual Ensemble and the National Chorale? Mm -hmm. Now there actually is. You. Well, well <laughs> no, I, You're beyond the that, I, I'm one of them. Uh -huh. uh, the director of the spiritual ensemble, uh, Dr. Everett McCorvey, he's the founder and director of that group, mm -hmm. is now our the artistic director for National Chorale. Ah. So it's it's one of those uh, testimonies in our business uh, for making sure that you build and maintain bridges with mm -hmm. people because uh, people. Uh, call call on their friends. People call on folks that they know are good and can do the job. If you, That's true. So. That's true. Uh, local audience is, have probably seen you here, but yes. they don't realize some of the special things that you have done in your vocal performance life. As, for example, I think you sang in front of the Kennedys. What was I, that all about? I did. I did. Again, connected to the spiritual ensemble to mm -hmm. Dr. McCorvey. Uh, uh, Dr. McCorvey has a relationship with Ireland, a, a company there uh, called Alltech. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't know about Alltech, I believe they engineer organic feed for horses. Oh. So your, your elite horses around the world are, are eating food engineered by the scientists at Alltech. And so there's a, there, this, uh, uh, wonderful uh, head of that organization uh, that was celebrating uh, the year that Kennedy visited there and all of their family came, the entire Kennedy clan, and they wanted a spiritual component to that event. Mm -hmm. And so Dr. McCorvey gets on the phone and says, John, I can't, I can't go. Can you lead four people and, and, and head over? And so four of us Where, were chosen. Was that at the White House? It was in no, it was in it was in uh, Ireland. Oh, it was oh, in, in Ireland, Ireland. But the Kennedys were there. Yes, at yes, the time. I yes. See. I was trying to figure so out if there was this, anything about Jackie's horse lovingness no. or <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no connection no, okay. really to uh, just a celebration of uh, of uh, John F. Kennedy Jr.'s speech, uh, not Jr. Spe his speech there mm -hmm. in New Ross, Ireland. Okay. So are you performing anywhere locally here this holiday season? I, I'm glad you asked that question. No I problem. believe you uh, s spoke earlier about to Bill, to Bill about the uh, festival. And I will be, be singing a, a, a piece with the Salisbury Pops, uh, led by Lee Nyer. Oh, great. Yeah. Can you tell us what it is? I is can tell you. It's not a secret. It's one of uh, the holiday favorites. It's Gesù Bambino. So you you probably you you it wouldn't be the season if you didn't hear Jesu Bambino uh, on the radio. Uh, That's I, I'm great. getting that look like you are wanting me to hum hum some of it. Uh, sure. Da 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 di da da di da da. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. You know that tune. I'm singing above a cold there. Sorry. How I ever tried to sing in front of John Wesley Wright? I have. No idea. <laughs> I think we need to make this a duet on Tuesday. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, the, and that's any other performances around here that we should 
not um, know about? Not so much this year. Unless, I know you're going home this yes, year. Yes, I am going home. To, for I'll be at home in Rome, Georgia for, for Christmas for the first time in a long time. So I'm, I'm usually at Trinity. Yes, you, we will miss you at Trinity because we're doing a beautiful cantata and there's a great tenor part. And, gee, yes. you would be so good. And but, I, I just remembered, I, I'm sorry, that talking about the Trinity reminded me that I am indeed singing this Sunday uh, at uh, St. Albans. Oh, okay. Episcopal, Episcopal for Church. the morning service. In fact, giving the pieces that I'm singing, the pieces that I sing, I'm singing in the Messiah. Oh. So I'm giving it a trial run at uh, St. Albans. Good practice. Yeah. Excellent. That's a great idea. Well, they're lucky to have you, and we're lucky to have you. Well, I, I don't you. know how we managed to bring you to Salisbury, Maryland, but I'm glad we've done so and kept you for a little while. Not leaving. I know. I'm with you. Well, always great talking with you. Great to talk with you. And I hope you have a marvelous holiday season. Thank you. And now here's another look at the events happening on the campus in January.
I'd like to thank my guests, Bill Folger, co-chair of SU's Theater, Music, and Dance Department, and John Wesley Wright, Associate Professor of Music. So many enjoyable musical events are happening on the campus this December. I hope to see you at some of them. I'm Susan Purnell. This has been Salisbury University On The Air. Thank you for watching and happy holidays. Hey.